Batch normalization has been a groundbreaking step into making neural networks faster and better. But it doesn't always work with all different kinds of neural networks, for example, recurrent neural networks. So that's why we have layer normalization, an improvement over batch normalization, and we will see how it works in this video. This video is part of the Deep Learning Explained series by Assembly AI. Assembly AI is a company that is making a state-of-the-art speech-to-text API. If you'd like to give it a try, go ahead and get your free API token using the link in the description. There are a bunch of problems with batch normalization. So the first one is that it's very hard to use it with sequence data because if the sequences are of varying length, batch normalization gets very complicated to calculate. On top of that, it's very hard to use batch normalization with small batch sizes because the whole point of batch normalization is to calculate the normalization values like the average and standard deviation on the batches. So if you have very small batch number, if you have a very small batch number, you're not going to calculate the mean and every standard deviation that actually represents the whole data set. And on top of that, it's very hard to parallelize a network that you use batch normalization in. So most of these problems happen because of the dependency that batch normalization has on batches. And layer normalization removes that dependency and calculates the normalization based on the layers instead of the batches. To quickly summarize what layer normalization does in one sentence, we can say input values in all neurons in the same layer are normalized for each data sample. And that's why under layer normalization, all neurons in the same layer will have the same normalization terms, so the same mean and the same variance. So let's see how this works in practice. So here I will show you how batch normalization is calculated between two layers. And here I will show you how layer normalization is calculated between two layers. So with batch normalization, let's say we have two layers in between them. We're going to do some batch normalization. The first layer has four neurons and the next layer has five neurons. What happens is with batch normalization, Let's say our batches uh, consist of three data points. We calculate the output of the prior layer for each of these three data points that are in the same batch. And before we pass it on to the next layer, what we do is for all of these batches, we calculate the average and the mean and use that to normalize the values for all of the outputs of all of the single neurons. And then these values is passed to the next layer. Whereas with layer normalization, again, let's say we have the exact same uh, structure. We have three neurons in one layer and the next layer has four neurons. And even if we have the batch size of three, again, let's say we calculate the uh, values or the outputs of the, from the prior layer like we did before. And so far, everything is the same. But from this point on, what we're going to normalize is the vertical values. So instead of getting the values from three different batches that correspond to the same neuron, the output of the same neuron, we're going to calculate and normalize the values per data point. And then again, like we did last time, after the normalization happens, we're going to pass these values to the next layer. So as you can see, there is no dependency on batch size in layer normalization. No matter how big or small your batch size is, you're just going to normalize values per your data point. One other advantage that layer normalization has over batch normalization is because it doesn't depend on batches, we do the exact same calculations during training time and test time. This was a little bit different in batch normalization, and if you don't know how that exactly works, go ahead and watch our batch normalization video to have a better understanding what the difference is between training time batch normalization and test time batch normalization. And that's exactly why layer normalization is better for RNNs. It's because it's no longer about the batch, but about the layer that we're doing the calculations on, or in RNN terms, the time step that we're doing the calculations on. So to sum up, basically layer normalization gives us a chance to do normalization on recurrent neural networks because it is able to deal with different types of lengths of sequences. On top of that, when we're doing layer normalization, we can choose whatever batch number that we want, no matter how small or big. And finally, with layer normalization, parallelization is no longer a problem because when you're using batch normalization, then you would need to have extra communication and synchronization between the different computers to be able to parallelize correctly. Whereas with layer normalization, every neuron has its own calculation, so you do not need to have that extra layer of communication. One downside of layer normalization is that it does not always work really well with convolutional neural networks. So if you want to use a CNN architecture, you might want to opt for batch normalization instead.
And that's it for layer normalization. If you like this video, don't forget to give us a like and maybe even subscribe to show us your support. If you have any questions or comments, leave it in the comment section below. We would love to hear from you. Before you go away, don't forget to go grab your free API token from Assembly AI using the link in the description. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.